Hello and welcome to the Lost Art Podcast. I am Paul and I am here with, as always, you guessed it, Gar. That's me. That's actually me. It is him. Yeah, it's me. For a minute, for a minute. They might have thought, it's not. It it's not. It's not. It won't be. It won't. Not this time. No, it won't feel me. It was. Definitely me. <laughs> Those me. things. Yeah, they're all right. Yeah. Pff, I don't know. I think this week, I, think, I have a feeling that this, this week might be the most like depressed week in my household since the beginning of the pandemic it's getting it's getting tough now because it's i don't know the, when the fight gets long the fight gets draining yeah I, you like, know the big like we're in this together yeah, <laughs> which we yeah. never wear it turns out we never wear yeah, yeah i mean what, what but, uh, march, march april may june july august september october like, that's eight months it's man getting fucking eight months like as of yeah. today it's the first of uh, october when we're recording this and uh I mean, who knows what'll happen between us recording this and it's this actually going out? But like, yeah, did this week is fucking rough, man. Like, nah, but like, we're not in bad. We are in bad humor, but we're not like fighting or anything. You can just see the fucking defeat, like in both of us, you know. And uh, oh, me and you, or you and no, in, in, me and ourselves, the gaff, like, you oh know? yeah, and just, just, I don't know what it is. I can't. I, the, the last couple of weeks have been hard to get the fucking. Well, get no the one's supposed going, to. You know? No one's supposed to live like this. It's mental. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not it's, supposed to live in each other's faces. No yeah. one is supposed to live in each other's faces. And it's, uh, it's in the yeah. fucking pocket, like, you know what I mean? And that's yeah. just stupid shit annoying me. Like, I went to where. Uh, and it doesn't matter how sound we are, me and you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It still doesn't actually matter. <laughs> no, how annoying no. is it? We spent the whole lives being sound <laughs> and, and only to have it, like, not work for 24 yeah. hours a day. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I'm, looking, I'm looking at people who are now absolute cunts, like, and they're fucking, they're making a few bob. I, now, oh, God, I, I know, yeah. Here's the thing. I figured this out today as well, that there's, there's pretty much, there's no problem in my life right now that couldn't be solved by a lot of money. Right. Oh, yeah. Well, that's usually. Yeah, I know. That's, yeah, I, I know. I, that's standard. That's pretty much part of the course. But I don't have like. There's no mad like health concerns. There's no fuck. There's none of that type of shit. You know what yeah. I mean? The oh, dogs well, like, are fine. The pets are fine. That. So it's just. It's literally. I need money for X, Y, and Z, and I have no money. Mm. And not only do I have no money, the government cut what little money they were giving me, and <sighs> fucking it's like so... I, I had I had um, a bank loan from a car, and I paused that at the start of this thing. You know, because I just can't afford it. Going on the fucking dole, essentially. Who the fuck yeah. have a loan on the dole? And uh, they rang me today saying, oh, you know, uh, your, your six months is up or whatever. Um, of your, your loan break. And I'm there. All right, yeah, so can you, like, punt it forward there now? Because, you know, I'm in the bar trade and uh, we're legally not allowed to open. And you yeah. says, no, no, um, no, no, you have to start paying now in a few weeks. No one job is illegal, right? You know, yeah, one exactly. job is illegal. Yeah, I'm like, it's, I'm like, it's like sign up. Going, What's your job? A hitman. I'm a hitman. Yeah, I'm oh, a hitman. Really? I think yeah. that job's illegal. I think that job's illegal, no? Yeah, but there's no hits this month, so I can't, uh, can't pay <laughs> pay me a loan back. So yeah, one's like, oh yeah, we, we can give you it. We can pause it, but it's going to uh, massively affect your credit score. And uh, you know, if you, if you oh, need even, that's just, how can how can things affect someone's credit score in a pandemic? I don't even really yeah. know what a credit score is. I'm not going to lie. Like I have an idea. Yeah. It's in the name. But like, I don't know if you get to look at it. Do you get to look at it? I don't, I'm sure you can. I don't, I don't, maybe, I don't know. I don't know what it does. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I've like, been taking out loans since I was 18 to pay for, like, fucking albums and fucking yeah. recording cool. and shit. And I always paid them back, you know? But now they're saying, like, because the, my plan was to get a new motor next year. Um, uh, so far, because we drive to Poland every year, as you know. And we didn't get to go last year. We didn't get to go this year, obviously, because of the fucking yeah. the lockdown. So I wanted to get it done fucking next year. So I'm thinking, right, I'm going to save a few, Bob. That'll be the deposit on a new motor. And yeah. uh, I'll have to get, I'll get a fucking loan out for the rest of it because I want to pay off as much of it at the start as possible because there's nothing worse than having a fucking loan around your neck. I hate years. them. You've, you've got the thing, but now you have to pay for it. Hate it. Yeah, it's poxy. It. Yeah. Although it's sometimes the only way I can get things. Absolutely. 100%. Is that savings? Forget it. I'll, yeah. I will buy something else. So in essence, <laughs> it's a pain in the hole, but you do get what you want. Yeah, I think that that's a problem with people in our trade. Like we're in kind of the entertainment trade in general. That like when you do get a few bob, it burns a hole in your fucking pocket, and it's very hard. Because yeah. we never we never had like real actual like adult jobs. Like I had good jobs when I was younger, but not really as an adult. If you get yeah. me, you know what I mean. Like I was fucking when I had a good job, I was living at home with me man the ass so like fuck all rent fuck all bills so, like, it's just my money to do whatever I wanted with so it didn't oh, matter them was the days you remember it's like, I'm, buying, I'm buying a new amplifier for 3,000 euro and it's great just <laughs> yeah, doing imagine spending over a grand now you know <laughs> like yeah exactly like <laughs> imagine having a grand like oh god so, it'd be deadly I wouldn't know what to do 
I Actually, would. I would. I'd, I'd give it away. Bills. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> give it away to someone else for for just to relieve relieve some of this anxiety. So yeah, yeah. the bank uh, the bank is uh, breathing on my neck now. So uh, Patreon.com forward slash Lost Star <laughs> Podcast or uh, Kofi.com forward slash Lost Star Podcast. Yeah, for real. Like this is the, like I know that we are doing this to keep ourselves sane, but there's people with decent jobs listen to this going oh, oh, what a great chuckle the lads only about music then they go into the jobs and don't even share this shit oh you fucking fuck. hell I'll, kill, I'll fucking kill you I will actually kill you when we're allowed <laughs> back out I swear to god I'm going to strangle you I've got a list of IP addresses for everybody who's ever listened to no it was someone's been listening to every fucking thing not sharing it once whatever about not giving money two people can't yeah. give money I don't care yeah, really that much about that yeah Anyway, oh, strangle you bastards! So we'll, anyway. t- we'll, t- we'll tell them what today's uh, episode is about. Yes, it is yes. called Hidden Gems, and uh, I'm sure we'll come acro- come uh, come uh, at it at different angles. Uh, yes, yeah. because we do that. But I'm going to go with my one. I chose songs that I feel if I brought the name of them up with someone, someone would go, I have "No idea what you're talking about." Mm-hmm. That song. Everyone has these songs that they gather throughout their life. Yeah, now, it could even be recently they pick up and they just they might be on a compilation album you might hear them yeah, on the radio yeah, yeah, yeah. they're not really big they're not really out there they are hidden yeah. um, this isn't the oh I know more music than you everybody has these songs Everyone everyone has, in the yeah. world has yeah. Yeah. Song, yeah. has songs that, uh, that they're going oh shit you should listen to this this is a very small artist these artists might not even be small but these are just what I yeah. consider you brought this up in the pub people wouldn't know what the fuck you're talking about half of them yeah um, so. I came at it from a slightly different angle I thought about um either albums that weren't well received or albums that had like tracks on the uh, albums that had tracks on them that kind of overshadowed everything else right and um essentially what i'm talking about, thinking about is kind of like almost b-sides or like just a kind of hidden album tracks that nobody ever fucking talks about i never heard anybody talking about any of these songs that i'm talking yeah. about yeah um they're, they're not like they're not the big swinging hitters um, from yeah. the groups. I mean, I didn't pick any group really that's uh, not well known. Pretty much everyone I picked is a big enough name, and some. Well, to, to it's some probably degree. good because everyone I picked isn't. So it just looked like a yeah, big, we'll leave now. Big wankers <laughs> playlist if it didn't. But I, I, I had a thing for myself. I said I will choose bands, and I kind of I looked looked at this to kind of get a bar, and I was like, Grand, all my, all my bands have under twenty k listeners on Spotify. Oh Jesus, yeah, and all of them have to be under 1 million plays. Yeah. So this is just, just what I had in my head going, right, that, that puts me in a, a box. I, I, I work better with boxes like that yeah. and, and with parameters. And uh, that's where I was like, grand. So I won't go, I end up talking about fucking, I don't know, the song I just like and it's massive. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Celine Dion, My Heart Will Go On. That's like a hidden gem, man. No, it's not. <laughs> no one talks about it anymore. <clears throat> Yeah, well, now, yeah. So, so under 20k listens bar one of the acts and uh, all songs that shows have under one million plays bar one of the acts but that's not a, that's I, I like when we both come come at it from a different angle that yeah. makes for a more varied playlist so who did you pick for your first hidden gem and why is the hidden uh, why is the hidden uh, so i picked um filter with the song my long walk to jail and it's um from their third album called the amalgam and the reason I picked it is because the first two filter albums are pretty big. Like they, they, I think they all went like, uh, I think the first one went platinum and the second one went yeah. fucking diamond or something. It's done particularly well for the first, uh, first two. But by the third one, by the time the third one swung around, they had kind of they'd lost a lot of their shine. Definitely, they didn't have any big banger. Well, they probably had good songs, but they, they had great reason. songs. But they, there's a couple of great songs on this, and they two songs that done real fucking well off this album. But like, I, what had happened was the, the album kind of came out, and then they went to go and do uh, the tour for the album. But um, uh, the, the, the whole thing seemed to be just it just kind of fell asunder from underneath fucking um, Patrick, the, the singer. Like, it yeah. just torn to show from, and he was, like, in and out. The, T1, the T1000's brother. Brother, exactly, yeah. <laughs> he he went, and he, like, he was stuck in rehab, and then he got out of rehab, and then he'd, like, do a lot of mad, mad fucking uh, drugs, and then he'd, like, stay awake for six or seven days and miss a lot of gigs on the record label. See, that's, that, there you go. You just killed your fucking shit there. Exactly. Killed your band. Exactly. So, he, um... Is he the American Christy Dignam? He might be. He might be. I think he might have a shit together now, but Christy might have it together now as well. Christy does, definitely. But what I'm saying is, when you're on the cusp, 
that's when you don't fuck around. Fuck around later when you're crap and you're playing crapper gigs. Yeah, because like, there was one of these things that <laughs> happened with Phil. They, they definitely could have been like one of the big American fucking alt yeah. rock bands. And like they were definitely. doing well. They were doing okay. And the, like I said, the first two albums were fucking sold very, very well. This tour comes along and this one had like the big major label polish to it. You know what I mean? Like it's... They've yeah. given them loads of time to record it. <clears throat> and this was this is actually the last um, the last album that had like the proper kind of original filter lineup. And but one by one they all fucked off and they filtered off. Yeah, exactly. And he ended up <laughs> Richard Richard Patrick ends up like sacking them and then he takes a break for a few months and he comes back and he just starts a new band with other people and calls a filter. Like it's the band is pretty much him. I am. Um, it's it's pretty much him, but like there's other fucking elements to it as well. He just made a bollocks of the whole thing. There was two singles that came off it. Uh, Where do we go from here? Which done pretty well, and a song called Cliche, and uh, that done okay as well. So this isn't even songs. a single off the album that no, no, one really, no, 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 no good. none of the none of That's these songs enough. I picked. Uh, none of these songs I picked are singles whatsoever. Um, yeah. These are all kind of hidden there deep. So there's a six year gap between um, the second album and this one. Oh, sorry, this album and the album after, because he made such a bollocks of it. So after the Amalga, he like, he, uh, there was fucking people trying to, he ended, ended up getting like Matt Walker from from uh, the, 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 the Smashing Pumpkins come in and play drums with him. He could only stick around for a while and he'd fuck off. And yeah. nobody really wanted to play with him. And it wasn't because he was a prick. He was just, he was, he was like unsteady. And like, he'd yeah. write a lot of bangers. And then it'd be time to record, and he's like, we're not recording these fucking bangers. We're just going to write it in the studio. <coughs> so the song, the, the song I picked is called uh, My Long Walk to Jail, and it's, it's, it's probably not the best song on the album, but it's one of the songs that I remember. Oh, yeah, that, that doesn't have to be. It's Hidden Gems, so. Exactly. This, there's something about this. When I first heard this album, because I, like, I really love the first two, so when this came out, I bought it on, like, Day Zero. And, like, obviously the singles, they were great, and there's a couple of other good songs. But there's something about the way this was put together you can almost hear them writing this on the fly in the oh, studio and if maybe those albums you know those albums that the songs are unfitted sort of seem unfitted yeah, the ideas going but, a bit long but I like I like looking it, at you Saint it, Anger it works, yeah it works in this yeah, this is very much sounds like Saint Anger actually this could, even the riff of this is a bit Saint Angry and um, you can just so feel stock, stock riff off the shelf kind of yeah they just pull out like half of Walk by Pantera you know what I mean oh That's them, yeah you know like, the riffs that sound like yeah, another riff J J J you know what I mean it's one of those type of fucking things but like, and you can hear like the engineer and the producer just sweating trying to fucking <laughs> trying to like glue it together but like they kind of come out with something cool and I always like this track I'm going to play a bit of it yeah um, we're going, oh yeah we should mention we're going to play because yeah. these are hidden gems I'm not going to expect you to know them because they're coming from our little yeah, brains which, we're going to play so, like a minute or two of each song or something and see um, but this is see if I can get this going here this is my long walk to jail by yeah, Filter <laughs> Jail, that's cool it. that sounds really like later Shane's Addiction like yeah really he, he, like he, Perry Farrell's yeah, yeah definitely has that Perry that, Farrell thing yeah. um, there's, there's, there's cool. another song I was going to play that literally like you, if you played it to someone they'd say that's fucking Shane's Addiction like, that's how like close it is it's shocking how yeah because later Shane's Addiction like dropped some of the punk element and went for more 
very well pro- overproduced sometimes mm, rock, mm. but I still love it because Perry Farrell's voice can be put into it and it's so fucking great. Exactly. That had a real songwriting feel of later transition to it. Yeah, yeah like that, that whole, I like that album an awful lot. Like it, it got shot on because, uh, like I said, when it came to actually supporting it, supporting it and um, promoting it and going on radio, doing the tours and all that, yeah, he just, Patrick Harris, just, or uh, uh, Richard Patrick, I keep Patrick Harris as the fucking other bloke. Uh, Richard Patrick, <laughs> Patrick yeah, Harris is the bloke like, of Focus Starship oh, no. Troopers. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Richard Patrick, that'd be unreal, I'd love to hear that. Richard Patrick just wasn't <laughs> able, and um, apparently he was, he's smoking like five packs of smokes a day, or six packs of smokes a day, and he could barely sing in the studio, all this kind of shit, you know? Like, so you can hear in part, parts there, like his voice is just <laughs> giving up, yeah. just breaking up. But it kind of adds, like I said, to me, I feel like that whole album was written in the studio, because apparently there was a big kind of divide within the band um, which is why most of the band ended up getting sacked or fucked off at the end where the band wanted to go more electronic and fucking Richard Patrick wanted to go more kind of rock and metal and, were, uh, and Neil Patrick Harris wants to write show tunes <laughs> exactly, and they were like what yeah. the fuck like he wants hey to know, man nice shot <laughs> he wants to know how we met your mother so like yeah. <laughs> he, he want, like so uh, th- th- it ended up now there's definitely electronic parts in this but like I, I doubt it's anywhere near um, what they wanted. I think they wanted to go down that more fucking kind of prodigy type of route um, or yeah. uh, soul wax. I was actually going to pick a couple of soul, uh, a soul wax song for this, but it's real hard after much against everybody's voice for soul wax. Like they get so electronic so quickly and so techno yeah. and so rave that like it's almost not the same band. They should have just changed the fucking name. Like they did, which, and then they they, 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 they did eventually too many DJs, and then they. But yeah, releasing stuff under Solowax, which is like Belgian sort of mm. uh, indie, indie electro uh, rock, post, post yeah. rock, or something. yeah, whatever yeah, the fuck. Deadly, because yeah. the two, yeah, the two lads doing the under the re, uh, remix moniker were too many DJs, and they had the radio show and all this kind of show. You. And they were releasing singles under that, and then they were releasing Solowax albums. But the Solowax albums were like fully electronic. There was no fucking instruments yeah, or singing. It got, it got, it got confused. Yeah, it was too much. Anyway, that was my force, and that was. Um, uh, filter with my long walk to jail. Who was your first one? My first one is Wild World by Love is Colder Than Death um, off the album Tegan Mouth from 1991. Mm. It's a dark wave song from obviously early 90s in a, it's Germany. I think they're from Leipzig. They might not be from Leipzig. That's where they are now anyway. Uh, kind of goth town in Germany. Oh, I've driven through Leipzig happening. on many times. Have you? Yeah, they've got many a big uh, goth festival. It's on, it? on the big road I have Gothic. to... Um, well, whenever I'm driving to Poland, they have to drive through Leipzig. Yeah, well, that's uh, that's where a lot of God stuff happens now. And thing, this they they started off as a a sort of standard dark wave band, and that's what this is. Mm. And then they kind of mutated into a neoclassical dark wave band. So more along the lines of Dead Can Dance, but yeah. like I don't know. I think the only neoclassical band, dark wave band, I would want to listen to. Mm. Or neoclassical band, they're not you know would be dead candidates. Once you have them doing that, I honestly think there's not much room for anyone else to do that. So I did listen to the later stuff by Love Is Coming mm. Together, and I was like, nah. But this is one that st- stuck out to me when I first heard it. I think this is on some compilation from years ago, mm. and I heard it, and I was like, fuck, that's deadly. And like, I would never say to a god, I wish I know something that you don't. They know Shit. everything. About yeah, God's. yeah, yeah. Especially gods in Dublin, the like, good ones they do. Really anyway. do. The real, the know real everything. Yeah. yeah, their musical knowledge is yeah. inc- insane. Like, especially like with... Actually, I did play this in Decrypt my DJ there, but the people that run Decrypt, like Fee and Connor and all the DJs, Jesus, man, their knowledge is astounding. Yeah. Yeah. Got. Should be a goth quiz, but they'd have to run it. Within, <laughs> a yeah. table quiz, a, a coffin yeah. quiz. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, this is, um, this is a song I've always really liked. While you hear the bass synth in it, it's absolutely atrocious. Okay. Like, it's, it's done on one of those real... Like this old keyboard. You see, people go. There's one of them old keyboards. Old keyboards are good, yeah. but old bad keyboards are still bad by their nature. Will always be bad. Yeah. So um, give it a bash there anyway. Yeah, see what you think. I actually yeah. really, really good song. All right. Feel the one war in the air. Everybody says, but happiness ever sing, ever sing, ever sing. Feel power in the air 
Everybody's running down the street Try it again Let's try it again Everything Everything Try it again Let's try it again Feel the wind in my hair Feel the wind in my hair Feel the white wall In the air You must be very ill When you be lucky Yeah, there's some Casio synths, but yeah. I just think that's a deadly song, and you can hear his mad German likes going to have a sauce. Das. <laughs> uh, I just fucking yeah, I absolutely love that. You can play that. Play on any club. Yeah, yeah. No, no any club of like people of a certain age. Wouldn't yes. play on the club of the eighteen year old to be like, What's that? What's that? That's weird. Goth that's music. fucking weird. Yeah, is that fucking Marilyn Manson's, is it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, I don't know what to say about this band because there's very little information. This is what's going to happen with Hidden Gems. Yes. We're going to talk about what we... Well, I'm going to be talking about anyway, what I like about the songs. Um, that, like I said, I played that when I, when I DJed in the crypt and mm. a few people were nodding along, but I don't know if they knew it or not, but I presume some did. I'd say I some, think... some do. I think uh, with um, a lot of the... the like kind of harder got stuff as well, like they, they, they know that it's checking the boxes and if they... They're not going to come up and say, like, who's that? Because that, that like out them as not known. That happens an awful lot. Yeah. Like every kind of genre club I've ever ran or been involved in, you'll never get people. You'll get like sound people coming up going like, what's that? Who's that? Because they want to know yeah. what's great. That's me at a club. Like, who the fuck is that? That's deadly. Like, yeah. Tell me who that is. But you'll get comes here like two kill for skill and just like the phone will come out and they'll bleed and sound hound or whatever. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. or whatever the app is, they'll fucking do that and they'll like they'll be nodding away like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great, isn't it? Yeah. Have this or else this is shit. What is it? Oh, yeah. But yeah, now, exactly. like, yeah, you don't get that too much in, yeah. in clubs like that. But uh, I did, um, I did listen to the rest of the album. It's good. And, and mm. later on, the later stuff, I remember thinking, like, getting into a mad buzz of this band for a while, and listening to when the later stuff was more sounds like Dead Can Dance. Yeah, yeah. Listen to the Dead Can Dance doing this because it's, yeah, neoclassical is. You got to be real good to make that not sound cringy. Yes. And some of the stuff is great, but it's very. Um, like the way they used the, go, the people who write the, the music, like Love is Colored and Death, they're, they're not great at picking great sounds. Mm. They that song and they kind of continued on because they have a lot of drums in the later stuff, those big kind of uh, like kind of epic drums. But you can mm. tell that VSTs, they're virtual instruments, you can really tell. But fuck it, it doesn't really matter because they do write a good song. And that is Love is Colored and Death. Wild World, feel the wild world. What's your. Uh, <laughs> uh, next my next one is a big artist but it's not a big song by uh, th- this artist and it's a song that I don't know where I heard it I couldn't tell you where I heard it before um, and it's Sergei Gainsbourg with a song called Chaos In Chaos Out and um, it's uh, the that, very, Are you in? Are you, are you in? Are you out? I, don't, I assume so I don't know um, or I am in you are out or so I don't fucking know I am in I am out I don't or know I am in you no, could, I, am could KS, no, I don't I know mean. nothing about France except for the fact that I hate that place um, <laughs> uh, yeah but I'm not telling that story again I'm sure I told that story again. <laughs> yeah. um, best roads in the world I'll give you that um, we have to pay it fucking 50 quid to go 10 minutes down the road um, <laughs> oh, they're poxy for fucking money Jesus Christ anyway <laughs> Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, Sergio Gainsbourg with KSD and KSD. And um, I don't know where I heard it. Um, it's off. Um, Probably driving in France. It could have been just on all the time. <laughs> um, the version I have on here is from a compilation called Comic Strip. But um, it's originally from an album called Initials BB um, from 1968. And um, this album actually has a couple of his, his bigger songs on it as well. Yeah, uh, it's got like Bonnie oh. and Clyde and shit like that, and as well. Oh, I love that song. Um, I think it's that's a great song. That there. There's a co- there's a couple of great songs on there. Uh, as with um, a lot of these old artists, it's hard to find what song was on what album because there's so many because compilations. compilations. Yeah, yeah, that's really fucking hard. Yeah. I had someone on this earlier, and because I couldn't find out what year it was, I just t- took them off it. 
Yeah, exactly. It, it's, it's very difficult. Like, uh, Serge had like 17 studio albums, but he like, he, he done soundtracks for like 60 movies and TV shows, you know, like it's, so, mm. it's all mixed up, it's all fucked up. I was, was a prolif- this- prolific oddball. Yeah, now, like he's considered to be one of the world's most influential popular musicians, but like, I, I don't know. I, like, I, 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 maybe, maybe. I think Sergei Gainsbourg, as much as I like loads of Sergei stuff, I think a lot of people might just pull Sergei Gainsbourg out of their hole to say that they love him because he sings in a foreign language and it sounds fucking spicy. You know what I mean? But yeah. I, I could be wrong. He's the um, sleazy older version of he's Ralph. He's so. scumbag, like he's a fucking scumbag. <laughs> um, or he was like he's just a rough. Now, to be fair, his his um his early life is fucking mad. Like he was he was is born it? in Paris to a Jewish Russian immigrants, and his parents fled the Russian Revolution. Um, that's why they ran to Paris. But unfortunately, as he's gone to school, um, as he's gone to school in Paris, World War Two happens, and Paris gets occupied. So um, he has to he has to wear the fucking yellow star and all this kind of shit sewn into his clothes Jesus. as a child. Yeah. So his parents have uh, papers faked and they run away to this uh, area called, oh, fucking, I don't know how you pronounce this, Limoges. Limoges. Um, they run, run away to there and it's in the French free zone. So apparently, well, France was occupied, only parts of it were militarized. So there are parts oh. of it were like, like the Germans are controlling things, but they're not there. Do you know what I mean? So there's like, there's a good like t- one tour to France that's like, there's no Nazi soldiers. It's just fucking, they're under the control of the Germans. Yeah, so like, don't, make us, don't make us come back there. You just keep <laughs> yeah, this ticking much. over. Don't make us come back there. We come back yeah, there. Exactly. Fucking dressed so, in that shit. Exactly. So he has to, um, the family sneak away there under fake papers and kind of start a new life in the, in the free zone until the war is over. So he makes a living kind of growing up as a, as a young teen, playing piano and painting and all this kind of shit. But he's a, he was a fucking mad pisshead, an absolute lunatic pisshead. He was. He looks like, like he likes just loads of gargle. Like he was he wine, got, white wine, wine maybe wine, looks yeah. like his thing. Yeah, wine. Yeah, he got, he got famous towards the end of uh, to, towards the end of his life just for like every single time that like he'd be invited on the TV or movies, he'd like show up in shy like yeah like and apparently he was doing it on purpose. You know what I mean? Like he was like he wasn't he wasn't pissed out all the time. He was just like, if he knew we had to go on telly, he's like, fuck this, I'm drinking, you know? Yeah. Now, it's cl- like Orson Welles or something. was like, well, they expect me to be bollocks. Exactly. Let's just get bollocks. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Now, he's smoking. At this stage, he's smoking 100 smokes a day, right? More um, than Neil Patrick. <laughs> more than Neil Patrick. 100 <laughs> smokes a day, unfiltered cigarettes is what he smokes. Jesus fucking Mary and Joseph. Um, he, he dies of a heart attack, right? Not, not leading there. Uh, Dies of heart attack, nothing to do with cancer. Um, he had he had liver issues as well, but he always said it was nothing to do with cirrhosis or anything like that. So, was, can um, you drink that much? And, yeah, her liver has to be like, look, I can do my best for you, but yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's like uh, th- this album that this is on uh, features Bridget Bardot, who he was having an affair with. She was married, I think he was married as well. They're both having a sloy affair. Well, um, she sang on the album, and uh, apparently he was maybe like literally head. while she's singing on the album. Yeah, like, exactly. You know? A sex exactly, and the album's actually called Initials BB uh, for Bridget Bardot. Like, he honored mm. the album after her, and apparently, she was like, Don't do that, my people. A cop on them, he goes, Fuck, I'm gonna tell anybody. So, he told everybody, He's like, I am in her and having an affair, like, it's mad French, you know, <laughs> little rap, yeah, exactly. He's just a fucking lunatic. Cunt. I'm gonna play a little bit of it. Um, yeah, it's just a, it's a great little song. I, I, I've always, always had a lot of time for it. Like I said, I don't know where I heard it first, but I don't know. Here, here's a bang of anyway. Jusqu'à neuf, c'est ok, tu es Après quoi, tu es KO, tu es out C'est idem pour la boxe Le ciné, la mode le cash box yeah. 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 Moitié bouillon, ensuite moitié jean J'ai mini carbure pas au mazout C'est extrêmement pop Si t'es à jeun, tu tombes en syncope Yeah, 
get the idea anyway. Mm. It's just a li- I don't know where I got it. Uh, it's always been in my head. It's one of those songs that's like whenever everyone goes quiet, all I can hear is like. Yeah. I, I love that Bonnie and Clyde song off that album as well. Yeah, but I haven't, I haven't heard I haven't heard the whole album. I've only heard that song, but that's that's cool as well. There's some, there's some uh, great yeah. stuff on the, the initials album. BB. Not letting it, anyone know who that is. That's uh, like saying uh, we'll call her. L. Simpson, no, Lisa. S. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, well done. Um, but he, like, <laughs> he was super prolific. Like, he appeared in nearly fifty movies and TV shows. He directed and wrote four movies. He wrote soundtracks. He wrote plays. He, he was always doing something. You know, he's um, one of my favorite sex pests. He's, uh, <laughs> I don't yeah. even know. He don't even know if he's a sex pest. No, appa- apparently, what happened was he, <laughs> as he got older, this is uh, something weird happened with him. As he got older, he started he start giving out about people talking about doing drugs and writing songs about doing drugs and about like, you know, having, you know, uh, sex outside of marriage. You got real like fucking real strict and conservative. Oh yeah, somewhere. I can make my money off it, but nobody else can. Yeah. But then he turned it again. He started doing all that like lemon incest stuff and shit like that. He yeah. turned it oh, again. Oh, that was after. That yeah. Was after, yeah. He that. turned again and he's just like, listen, I'm doing a whole album. It's just noises of people riding. Like that type of shit. So okay. people, people were, then Arse people got slapping for the drums. Exactly. Just, just that. Like he was, he was <laughs> he, so he was getting in trouble towards the end of his life for like all the songs just all being about Lloyd and he just went to like the dirty old man mode. I wouldn't mind, he was fucking, his voice isn't particularly great and he's not a good looking man at all. He's fucking wretched in fact. No, and he's, but he's one of those guys. He's and he's, those, it's like, I don't know, Ron Jeremy. They, they yeah, have I don't know what it is. Appeal of, of not giving an absolute shit. Yeah, can you imagine the and, uh, smell of him and all? Like the, the, just he cigarettes. Must be, exactly. Just smoke. smell like a, sh- a shirt with cigarettes, a so cotton and cigarettes. Yeah, just smokes, old pissy wine, <laughs> fucking B.O., <laughs> fucking whatever lane he slept in last night bit of paint or something like that's it but that must appeal to a certain fucking like type yeah, of person of it's just like of oh course. man a beard of Sergei from me please anyway <laughs> that was Sergei Gainsbourg um, I don't know that was 1968 that came out he died in 1991 hmm. like I said of a heart attack uh, who is your next one my next one is The Burning Man by Songs of the Green Pheasant now if you've never heard of Songs of the Green Pheasant that's okay that's okay this was released in 2005. He is, uh, it's a one man project. Mm. A guy called Duncan Sumner, and he is a school teacher. Um, oh, well, all right. I think he, yeah, I presume he's still a school teacher because I don't think he's lighting the music world on absolute fire, but yeah. he's definitely doing quite well. It's kind of like folk with a bit of shoegaze, but all electronic right. samples the other time. And the electronic sample in this song is one of those ones that comes in and is, you know, unnerving. Yeah. I mean, you think you know what way the song is going, then this sample comes in and it goes in and out of time with the drums and it's almost like... Weird. It's fucking deadly though. You can hear a bit of like Bell and Sebastian, Simon and Garfunkel, like... Cigarro, I suppose you'd hear a bit of that as well. Yeah. And he records all of his stuff on four tracks and eight tracks and yeah. does all of his own artworks. It's very made on. You'd love that. You'd love that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you went into that. He does have a record deal. He had a record deal with Fat Cat. For, uh, for this album and a few other and now he is on an the Irish street. record Irish the record street. label oh he's on an Irish record label now <laughs> okay alright called Rusted Rail and he's set to, he's re- he has an album out with them and he's set to release another one um, give, it a, give it a last year it's yeah, very it's melancholy but then when that sample comes in you'll know what, what I'm talking about it sounds like he's, a, he's in a, a wood mill or right. a fucking sawmill or something you know? <laughs> Christmas lights, lights of the new year dream. 
was a sample of an old Ford Escort trying to start. Was it? It's, it's mad. Like, it's a I absolutely, I absolutely love it. Like the, because I pointed it out, I probably threw people off because you're expecting it, and it sounds like it's it dismantles the song. But when you listen to that song all the way through, and it comes in, it's like oh, it's just deadly. I just love yeah. it. I find it. It's almost like industrial. Industrial. Yeah. Mm. So, uh, like I said, he's got a new album coming out this year, possibly with uh, a like well. He'll do a lot of Irish stuff. Um, deadly. And uh, he's just I'm write that down. Yeah. Send my stuff too. Rusted. Right. Yeah, there you go, man. <laughs> Honestly, do. But they, 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 Rusted Rail does a lot of like shoegaze and dream pop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all very, very, very chill, though. Which, uh, uh, yeah. Oh, you know, it's not a bad idea, actually. Mm. Send, it, send it to every record. Send everything to every record level. You yeah, never know. Um, I need, I think I nearly deleted it tonight to make room on my laptop to download the, four, the, the first uh, season of Lucifer. Um, That's on Netflix. Uh, no, only the last season is Netflix bought oh, it. Oh, yeah. They, they don't yeah, have the first right. couple. And I started watching it and I kind of liked it, even though there's no coursing on it. I'm breaking me no coursing rule. Um, uh, I lived with someone who watched it. It looks dreadful. Because uh, it's, I, I, cause it's based on a character from the Sandman comic book, so I kind of want that. Oh, is it? Yeah, it's right. a DC property. Like, And apparently the first couple of seasons, I just like, nah. And then it gets real good. So I want to just stick with it <laughs> until it gets real good. Because it, it's going to be one of those filler shows for me. Oh yeah, there's nothing wrong with those, I suppose. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I just that was a that was songs of the. I kind of like that. I think I might, I might really have a listen to that. Um, Do tomorrow. give that album a listen. That's off the yeah. self-titled album, 2005 mm. uh, songs of Rain Present. I'll give that blame tomorrow. Who's your next one? My next one is another big band, and it's a band that we talked about last week as well. But they kind of weaselled their way back in because they've been. Uh, I've been listening to them a lot. Um, I've always listened to them a lot, but it kind of fell out a little bit. But since we were, um, since the podcast last week, they've been at the forefront of your mind again, and it's the Ramones. Um, right. They did a lot of stuff, so there's probably definitely hidden gems. Just there, just, yeah. Um, so uh, I picked a song, called, a song called Zero Zero UFO, which I might have even put in one of the podcasts before. It's one of my favorite Ramones songs. And once again, I can't tell you why. Um, there's nothing particularly special about it. Um, it's off an album called Brain Drain from 1989 and this would have been the last album to have uh, D.D. Ramone kind of writing songs and playing on it he right. barely played on it this would have been around the time that Ramones are about to just like give it all up you know I was going to say it's very late Ramones though. yeah how long are they going for? Like, going for early mid seventies or early, early seventies until uh, sorry mid seventies till the last gig was nineteen ninety six I think, but there yeah. was kind of gaps in the gaps in the in, in the fucking layout there as well. Not, like, kind of, not only that, at that stage of the eighties, that kind of punk had almost gone away with it. Pretty much. I mean, they they had their, they had their shots on major labels and stuff. This, I think this was their last album on Sawyer Records as well before they went moved to label and. The band fucking hated each other at this stage. Like, hated each other. They never got along as we covered last week, but they, in 1989, they fucking despised each other. Like, no one was talking to each other. They were all fighting. Fucking, it was just a shit show. And um, the guys in the band look back on this album, they're like, I don't, I hated making that album. Um, I don't really like anything on it. Um, which is strange because uh, Pet Cemetery is on this album and I Believe in Miracles is on this album. Mm-hmm. Both of them are killer songs that don't real well from. Uh, mm. Pet Cemetery, Pet Cemetery in particular, was a big fucking song for them. Um, so they, they like Johnny Ramon gave an interview and he's like, like I think there's a song called uh, Crime and Punishment on there. He said that's decent enough, but we'll never play it again. Um, it was just a, a horrific fucking experience for them to record and to promote, and they just were not into it. Um, most of their songs, like to be honest with you, that are on this album are just standard Ramones, fair, bog standard. It's never they never really break out their wheelhouse, and that's kind of why people like the Ramones. Um, they found what they were good at and they just kept doing it but this one this one has this kind of kitschy fucking 1950s kind of feel to it and Joey Ramone is kind of he's, he's shouting he's not even like it just almost sounds like he just does, doesn't give a ball he's just roaring the fucking roaring the lyrics just yeah. the riff is just it's not even a really standard kind of uh, Ramone riff it's, it's slightly kind of broken up which is unusual for them because they usually just play at Everton Four four time, everything's a downstroke. You know, there's no. There's, I'm gonna play it just to give you a little, yeah. a little shot of it because it's, again, it's it's not strange for the Ramones. I, and for some reason, I can't tell you why the song has always appealed to me. It's always been one of my favourites. Periods here. Where it came from, I don't know It did not look like it came from Japan And out of the dog walked the 
Fair, but for some reason that song has been burnt into my head for a long long fucking time I always loved it um, yeah. it's just well, this is what this is a kind of a personal playlist for us though. oh yeah very much this isn't the best of yeah, yeah, uh, yeah people who had only one eye yeah that exactly. might not be a bad that might not be a bad playlist there or, yeah yeah people <laughs> one eye people missing body parts that'd be a good one um people with shit shit body parts that'd be a good one as well when you just shit. don't yeah you just don't like someone's ears or something like fuck his ears you yeah. get on a playlist big fucking nose on you going on a playlist that'd be a good one that, <laughs> that, that'll be in about four years time we're scraping the bottom of the fucking barrel <laughs> we're doing all the volume trees <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> exactly you just ran out of shit to talk about yeah. um, just cunts I don't like don't like something about them now we probably end up doing we actually done people we don't have like. we ever no we don't think we have oh we've done no <laughs> we've, we've done, done people who are scumbags like, horrible cunts not horrible yeah. cunts like, but like not always scumbags you picked some real Door bags. Dorse. I picked people who would know the shit on me, like Van Morrison. So yeah, I guess. Yeah. No, we should. Thing. We should. We should pick people we don't. Do you know what? That's a good one. A podcast for people we don't like, but we know it's un- very unreasonable because they're probably. Oh yeah, just for no reason. There we go. Yeah, just for exactly. Now. Did you see the uh, the? I don't know whether it's real or not. I hope the cut is real. That they they leaked out lyrics for the new Van Morrison album, and it's all like anti-corona. Mask no, wearing true. fucking shit. That's that's true. True. Yeah. Well, I don't know if the lyrics are true, but he's come out and said I've written three songs about the crowd. Really? Yeah, and, uh, I've been, and having your rights taken away and all that shit. Because like, I've seen lyrics on yeah, there. Yeah, fucking easy, yeah, I saw stuff on Lion and it's pretty fucking like the lyrics. If it is the lyrics, like, I hope it is. I hope to God it is because they're fucking dire. I can tell you right them. now, right? Yeah. Of all the people that need to be protected, it's his fucking fans, man. They're oh, all yeah. fucking chain smoking 70 year olds like yeah. him. Yeah, big time. Oh, you know, you got those cool young people. I love Van Morrison, Moon Dance, Astral Weeks. Oh my yeah. God, it's perfect Irish music. Fuck, fuck, shut the fuck up, you fucking sap. There's those I people see. that go, I've always loved Van Morrison. Yeah, I seen the record yeah. spot. Um, the, the one of the record shops in town. They were doing a thing where they had a big selection of um Van Morrison LPs, so they put them up for sale for cheap. And they just really? attached. Uh, they just attached masks to them, so it was like a free Amazing. mask with, with every Van Morrison album. Because his, his birthday was only on a few weeks ago on like telly, and all the people were doing all of his songs and all. Like, yeah. oh, Van Morrison, yeah. like obviously he's great and very influential. Personally, not for me, but whatever. Yeah. Uh, but comes across as a shit heel, really, doesn't he? I, I said I, that's why I'm glad I put him in that playlist of yeah. people. What people? What people don't like? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Right, anyway, that was uh, that, the Ramon song. Like I said, I one of my favourite songs on that album in particular. Um, once you cut out the singles, one of the, the processes for me when I looked at these songs or these albums that I wanted to pick from is I take the singles and I just remove them. Uh, they have to be albums that I like in general, but I take the singles out and I cut them and I look what's left and I go, is there anything in there and that stood out that like, I kept listening to? And that uh, yeah. Zero Zero UFO was, it was one of them for me. Um, so who is your next one? Well, sticking with 80s punk. All right. Let's do that. Let's play. Not let's play, but we'll play it in a minute. We'll yeah. talk about it first. I was like, I can't wait to hear this song again because I love it. I haven't heard it in ages because I'd forgotten about it. Uh, this is the kids with a Z. They will be on next time who are, um, kids are a Belgian punk band. I first heard them in Thomas House of all places. All right. And Paul from Interzone was playing it. And uh, I was like, fucking hell. Who, they did that thing. I was like, who's that? That's a go. banger. Yeah, that's a banger. So these guys are sort of semi well known, not really that much. No, in punk, actually, punks might know. Mm. I don't know. They're um, they know them. Punks, Belgian punks would know them. There we go. Hell you know, with that. It's a hidden gem. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they had a they had a European hit with Fascist Cops in '78, and uh, they are very 
kinks inspired and you'll yeah. hear that from the solo that's why i had to leave the solo in the clip and play so just mm. play it there this is a really catchy yeah. song it's such a good song actually here we go Yeah, that's the kids. There will be a next time from the album. Okay, well, yes, from get eighty-one. I'll get it. Undertones kind of feel to it. I like it as well. Yeah, it uh, the the end. I couldn't play the whole song because it's like three minutes. We yeah, can't do, do three minutes. Do two two minutes and a bit maybe max yeah. in this this one. But the end of it is deadly. He comes back in. And he just sings the whole thing a little bit higher, and it's uh, yeah, it's just deadly. It's um, their uh, their bass player was only twelve when they started that band. And he couldn't get into any of their gigs. They actually were like kids. Yeah, yeah. It's not a million months away. They signed a, a, co- a record contract with Phonogram and they played support for Iggy Pop and Patti Smith. Yeah. Their last album was 85 and they broke up. But then they got back together to just play. They haven't played, um, they haven't played, I haven't written a single, like, I don't think a new album yet. I mean, That's I used, a big I used, thing, I used yeah. to play, I used, that bass line in the song is amazing. I used mm. to play it in a covers band I was in with Kim, who listens to this podcast. Oh. Yeah, she was singing it. I, I, we all killed him. Let's do some covers yeah. in the shed for the crack. And I picked this and we all picked one song each. What other yeah. songs did we do? I think Kim picked Scum Olympus. Scum by Napalm Kim, Death. I think Kim picked the Limp Bizkit song. One of the lads picked, uh, do you know, The Wipers? Yeah. Over the, over the Edge. Yeah. And then what was We played that a few weeks ago on the live show. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's an absolute fucking banger. Yeah. yeah, that's the kids. They will be the next time. Belgian Funk from the 80s. Still going. If you want to see them, they're not kids anymore. I'm going to tell you that right now. <laughs> the the, the old lads. The old lads. There yeah. will be some L lads. <laughs> who's, your, who's your next one? Uh, next one is another big band. Again, not to break uh, my theme for the evening. And it's, <laughs> it's uh, Iron Maiden with Chains of Misery of um, Fear of the Dark. So, with Fear of the Dark, Fear of the Dark came out in 1992, and I distinctively remember buying it um, from a news agent in Kinsale in Cork. I was on holiday with family down there, and it was this poxy little news agent right in the town centre, and I had one of those little spinny cart things, you know, little spinny, like, you put the fucking like, birthday cards and shit on them? Oh, yeah, yeah. I had one of those that had tapes on it. Didn't do CDs, even though it was 1992. They had on tape, and uh, yeah. I bought it with whatever money I had in my pocket, because uh, I had like Power Slave and all this shit that like was just floating around. Now, bear in mind, I was like eleven, right? I was only starting 
to have mm. any sort of interest in kind of rock music or heavy music in general. And uh, I bought this. So I burned this fucking tape out like on me Walkman. Like this was would have been one of the first ever like proper cassettes that I ever had. That wasn't like a compilation of shit recorded off the radio once I figured out how to yeah. up the Sanyo recorder, you know. And uh, so this before was just, you, before you broke it off your sister's head. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the same one actually. I smashed that my sister's head. The same one that I used. It would, it would have been a similar era as well. Um, first walking in while I was trying to record the Bartman. Um, if anybody missed that episode, yeah. And uh, um, I thought the microphone was active, so I picked up the Sony and I burst it over her head. I also hit her with a, a guitar and I pulled a lot of hair out, left with a bob patch on the top of her head. Or I'll hear that stuff. This, this, this sounds aggressive. These are funny stories along the way. Of oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, just say them. Like, yeah, just like say the bad, the bad bits all in one go. Yeah, 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 but, yeah exactly. Yeah, no, they're funny. Well, it is. Yeah. <laughs> I, scal- I scalded her with a, with a curry one night as well. Because <laughs> she got me the wrong curry. I belted it over. Re- remember, face. folks, they were children. <laughs> <laughs> People listen to this going, oh my God. Well, well, last week I went over and I put a head through a fucking wall. So. Just to, you know, get up to... Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> my sister kill me. Are you joking? She had two fucking... She had two children and lives in a house with my mother and father. She's hard as fuck. Um, so this song, uh, I Chains of Misery. <laughs> this... Uh, like, listen, when this album came out, I was fucking all over it. Um, it has the song Fear the Dark on it, which is one of the best Iron Maiden songs in my in my head anyway. It's very good, especially it's the very good. Rock and Rio live version. Yes, rock exactly. And live version. Um, well, there's a live after death and there's Rock and Rio. And there's, there's, they've, they've another one coming out now. Uh, they have a new one they announced today, I think. Mexico. Uh, is it Mexico they announced today? Yeah. Yeah. Mex- some Mexican they're live in Mexico or something yeah. like that. Yeah. I don't know how, most people are hiding how shite they are live the older they get and Iron Maiden just keep banging out fucking DVDs of them last oh, week. I don't know. Like, we went to see them a couple of years ago and I thought they were exceptionally good. Guys, that's what I'm <laughs> saying. Like say. every other band is getting worse as they get older. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah and Iron Maiden yeah. are like, no, we're still shit hot. Like, you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? I'm just throwing out live DVDs. I, I've always had yeah, that. A, that is ballsy, spot. actually. Yeah, I never thought yeah. about that, actually. That is um, ballsy. Yeah, big time. I, I've always had a soft spot for, for Iron Maiden. Like I said, fear, fear of, um, I was about to say fear of a black planet. Fear of the dark. Um, fear of the dark when it came out. Like I said, bought it like the week it came out uh, out of this uh, this news agent. And I just, I fucking listened to it so much in my walk, man. Because um, it was one of them family holidays, you know, so they're, they're fucking boring when you're 11, 12 years of age. You don't want to yeah. be there. <laughs> you don't want to be there. You're at that yeah. You just want to, you don't know what you want to be doing. Like you know, eleven, twelve, you've no interest in women, you've no interest in anything. You probably just want to play Atari and Nintendo. Really. You know, you want to stay indoors, you want to close the curtains because the showing is annoying you off the telly. Praying for a fucking pandemic. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So when this album came out, I was mad for it. And obviously I knew Fear the Dark was a fucking killer song. But um so there was a couple of singles. It was Fear the Dark. Um, actually, believe it or not, Fear the Dark wasn't even a single off this. Uh, be quicker, be What's dead. No, oh, you're probably because it's about eight hours long. Yeah, Ooh. yeah, there is an edit of that as well, but that's not a single. Like, be quicker, be dead from here to eternity and wasting love. Uh, where the three singles up and wasting love is important because it's the first kind of power ballad that were made and ever done. Yeah. You know, this is the last album before, um, this is the last album before he fucks off and uh, before Bruce Dickinson fucks off. Um, to do a solo career and they start getting in like Blaze Bailey and all these guys to kind of cover from for a couple of years Blaze is so, uh, good lad yeah, fair. yeah did a good job did a good job of what he had exactly so uh, Bruce doesn't come back till 1999 but this because Bruce had put out uh, some solo stuff even before this that were kind of, had a lot of power ballad stuff on it and ballady shit he kind of wanted to bring that into uh, Iron Maiden and there was a lot resting on the shoulders of this album because the album beforehand No Prayer for the Dying didn't do well at all didn't do well. It wasn't well received by like the critics, by the public, and it was because one of the lads in the band had made a recording studio in his shed, um, and it just didn't cut the mustard. They recorded the, the album No Prayer for the Dying in there, and it just wasn't working out. They were toy on space. The equipment wasn't great. Um, even though like the lads in Iron Maiden would have more money than fucking God, it just didn't turn out well. They tried oh, to the self produce <laughs> the whole shebang. So they decided right, we're going to try this one more time. They brought in one of their old producers that they got on well with. They updated the the, the garage. They uh, put new equipment in, soundproof and the whole shebang, and tried to do, um, tried to do it again in here. And they still weren't. They were happier than they were with No Prayer for the Dying. 
but they weren't overly happy with how it sounded in the end either. Right. Like, it's still very fucking limited. We're better off going to like one of the original studios that we wanted to use. Um, so the title track kind of definitely overshadows everything else in the album. Like even like Be Quick or Be Dead, they're all, they're all all right. Like this album is, this is a two and a half, three star out of five album. Like now in the cold, clear light of fucking day, me as a grown man, you know, listen yeah. to them. Like it's not, it's missing the punchiness of all the old fucking, the, the kind of older cool fucking, um, two minutes to midnight and fucking, oh, it's missing all the cool shit that I wanted from yeah. Iron Maiden because they just, they had this lull for years. Even when Bruce came back, it's really give a show. You listen to it once, you go, oh, it's Iron Maiden. And I, but they're missing that Iron maiden that they had. <coughs> um, this I'm actually is, holding an Iron Maiden plaque in my hand this whole conversation I hadn't even copied. <clears throat> I have a I have a plaque. You know, when you're mixing music, you have to have something to tumble in your fi- yeah. in your hands. So you go, fiddle. Mm-hmm. Mm, that's a good mix. You have so to have a fiddle. Yeah, holding, or, as you said, I looked down and you were saying the word Iron Maiden as I read Iron Maiden. I thought I was going to have one of those interplanetary strokes. Full stroke. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, this is one of the only songs written by Dave Murray as well on the album. I think there's only two songs by, by Dave on the album. And Dave Murray's the only guy who's always been in the band. He was like the only one member really? who, yeah, he was always being in the band. Everyone else has, was a replacement that got replaced at some stage. Imagine the shite he had to put up with. Actually, I don't know if Iron Maiden are that bad, shite was. Say Bruce know. Dickinson is a bit of a pain in the arse at times, but he so. does seem not all right as well, though. Yeah. Uh, now, I don't know, I can't put my finger on why I like the song. Again, um, it has a cool little riff, but it <laughs> you seems like... a lot of songs you're not sure that you like. No, I, de- no, I do <laughs> like them, but I don't know why I like them. That's oh, that's fair, like, fair enough. Like if somebody, every song I've picked here, somebody would ask me, like, what's your favourite song after album? I picked these. You know what I mean? Right, yeah. yeah. Um, they, these are definitely fucking, they're definitely important to me. Um, why, they're just a moment in time to me, and I think they, that there's glue, there's like, I think every album has a song that is like, that holds the rest of the album together. It's like the fucking, the Juma's key or something that just makes sense. Um, I'm going to play a bit of this now and you might get where I'm coming from when yeah. I'm talking about um, Fear of the Dark. There's something about the way this, this song is written and it has loads of Iron Maiden stuff but it never goes too far up its own hole like a lot of Iron Maiden stuff. And this is Chains of Misery. Good stuff. I don't Star that song sounds like Phil in it is about to come in. Play, the, <laughs> play it if you can, just yeah. while you're doing that. Go back to yeah. the start of just what you played there. And I want everyone to imagine just after the riff is finished, All right. uh, fucking <laughs> Phil okay. in his voice coming in on this. I just want to, like, obviously, I have another band coming up that fucking took, took from it. Uh, yeah. What? And do rose and do the You just fucking hear that. <laughs> That's so there. Someone, someone plays. Um, uh, hang on, I have to try. And, I have to play something for you before, before we go on, right? Um, someone made this thing uh, the other day. It's actually it was the singer uh, from. You know, I'm not gonna do it. It'll fuck everyone up. I'm not gonna do it. No, I'm not gonna do it. Do it. Just, uh, all right, hang on. I have to do find you, this. little prick. <laughs> so the singer from uh, Sheer Terror. 
um, put this post up the other day. Now, um, Sheer Terra, like a like a hardcore band from New York or whatever, right? So, but they've done this. XXX Betrayal X. Uh, n- no, they, 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 not. They, not not by any means. But p- anybody who likes heavy music and people in particular who went, a lot of people would have went mad over a, a band I talked about an awful lot, uh, Crow Mags, ha- announced a gig in Dublin for next year. And everyone's going, That's right, yeah. mad, right? So everybody's losing their mind. However, it's not, not the real Crow Mags. It's an, another fucking kind of splinter group of the band that exploded. There was, at one stage, it was two, maybe even three versions of Chromax doing the rounds. But, but if you don't check your Wikipedia, <laughs> you'll just think that is Chromax going yeah. to go. Mm. Like, we, t- we actually mentioned that last time. People don't... You, you were saying that it, someone was playing down in Kerry or something like that? Half yeah. Of, oh, the Beach Boys. The Beach, beach, boys, beach boys, boys, yeah. <laughs> the people are going to go, oh my God, the Beach Boys are Actual playing... Actual Beach Boys, yeah, the NEC <laughs> Centre. Yeah, exactly. They're actually playing on a beach in Killarney. Exactly. Hang on, yeah. does Killarney have a beach? Yeah, and it's just Mike Love and a lot of other Playing, They're playing the songs. But, uh, Killarney Beach. So uh, Paul, who's the lead singer from Sheer Terry, be one of the lo- most kind of fucking revered figures in that scene everybody loves him but he's a real fucking mouthpiece and he gives everybody a lot of fucking grief and he posted up this Tin Lizzy song the other day and he just said like he just put this post up on his page saying listen to this song and tell me this isn't every single Cromag song that's been written since like 1987 so like Mm. essentially every song after the first album the first album is a masterpiece and then the band kind of were destroyed and the the bassist Harley Flanagan um, starts singing and start writing all the songs and they released a bunch of albums and EPs and shit like that. And I have to, I have to play this song. And it's just be, be for the fucking me heads who like Crow Mags, um, because it's fucking painful. I'm gonna leave the mic on so you can hear it. But it's uh, it's literally every single Crow Mags song. This is a gore. Yeah, so I think Tin Lizzy might have invented hardcore, um, kind of Jeez. by accident. <laughs> and, uh, so I was listening to that and I was going like, what the fuck, man? That, that, is, is that real? And I, I had to go, because I, I like Tin Lizzy, but I kind of lost fucking interest after a while, to be honest with you. And um, yeah. there's a lot of later stuff. I just have no real fucking interest, not really. And uh, I'd never heard that song before. And boy, Jesus, when I played it, I went, fuck me, man. That is literally every single, and not only Chrome Mags, like, I'd say another 50 fucking bands, realistically, um, that That's that was smart. just lifted off. Anyway. By the way, just for, just for geography's sake, I said earlier, I was like, they're playing some beach in Killarney. Hang on, that doesn't, I was meant to kill Kenny. I know that Kilkenny doesn't have any beaches, but I didn't know if Killarney does. And I looked, like, hang on, Killarney, man, is like covered in water on every side, but apparently it does not have a beach. Really? Does Crazy. Killarney have a beach? Google said there are so many beaches you can access from Killarney. But Killarney well, doesn't directly have one. Unfortunately, doesn't have any beach or port. So there you go. I didn't make too much for showing myself. You know what? I could have got away with that just by not saying nothing. Yeah, well, just... My last thing I said was, Clarny, that doesn't have any beaches. Maybe it does. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> some geography. Uh, <laughs> we get we get awful in trouble for our geography in Ireland. Remember we couldn't figure out where the fucking N17 was? Oh, I fucking... Listen, when you're from Dublin, like... Yeah. Th- there's a certain we amount. We don't need such trivial things in our lives. As, as you're, no you're one out, out, outside We're not even allowed outside at the moment anyway, so... True, true. Anyway, that uh, was uh, Iron Maiden. <laughs> Who is your yeah. next one? My next one is a song that Morrissey played in a restaurant to Noel Gallagher. All right. Because did you know that, that Morrissey, when he travels around, carries a CD of his favorite songs, and when he goes into a bar and he's the music is unpleasant, he will ask them to put on his CD, which he will produce for them. Well, when, when I was drinking with him, he was asking for songs to be put on Spotify. Yeah. Well, one of them might have been this, because it is one of Morrissey's favorite songs. All right. And it is from the English singer, songwriter, and actor, Brian Prothero. All right. The song is Pinball. I do consider this quite a hidden gem. Hmm. It was, best thing it ever did was reach 20, number 22 in the UK charts hmm. in 1974. He's actually the narrator for the First Dates TV show, which is not actually a bad show. Hmm. I think that's like 
reality show about people going on their first blind date. Yeah. The Irish one is hilarious. I've watched a few of them and it's like, mm. fuck, man, we've got some great characters in this country. Great characters. Great characters. Uh, yeah, this is a great song. It's kind of, Brian Prothero has a, a real good ability to do clever tongue-in-cheek mm. wordplay. He was also, he had a very, very tiny role in the movie um, Superman. All right. As a co-pilot of one of the Air Force ships. Interesting. And uh, give it a basher anyway. This is, yeah. a, this is a really fucking good song. It's a really chilled out song. All right, here we go. And I've run out of pale ale And I feel like I'm in jail And my music bores me once again and I've been on the pinball And I no longer know it all And they say that you never know when you're insane Got fleas in the bedroom Got flies in the bathroom And the cat just finished off the bread So I walk over Soho And I read about Monroe the wonder was she really what they said Got a call from a good friend Come on down for the weekend Didn't know if I could spare the time I knew a woman who was crazy About a boy who was lazy but it didn't work out Cause they just couldn't make it rhyme Hey Jude, you were alright I could've grooved with you all night But you turned your back on the party game Mama, if I keep my head clean Will I really have a good dream? Will I wake up in confusion just the same? That's great. It's a brilliant song. Yeah, that was great. It's a really, really good song. Yeah. So in typical uh in typical Noel Gallagher style, he took that song and took a bit of it because he's a fucking borrower. Yeah. He is a borrower yeah. and he has a song called Riverman from um his album Chasing Yesterday. Uh, and he acknowledges that he goes, yeah, look, look, we're in the studio and I was in the middle of just looking for a style to, to do on a certain, and it doesn't, it doesn't rip it off too much. Yeah. Compared. It just has that, it starts, it's that in the, in the chords of uh, Wonderwall again, because you can't get away from doing that. Yeah. It's, it's so many, so many, so many Oasis songs have the, and change a little yeah, bit at the yeah. end. It's like that Wonderwall. Like, uh, Master Plan can start a little bit like. It does, yeah. Yeah, so Master Plan's a great song. Yeah, so he, uh, I don't know what Brian Prothero was really up to. I couldn't really figure out much. I think he still does. He's in his 70. He's about 70 something. And he does not look it. I saw a picture of him. was like, he one of those, like, does not grow old. Immortal fuckers. fuckers. Yeah. Full gray hair, but suave. Yeah. Yeah. Fair fucks from Brian Prothero. Big Marcy is a massive fan. Just mm. if you're listening, Brian. Marcy, if you're listening, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> mm. Who's your next hidden gem? I do find that hidden gem. Who's your next <laughs> hidden gem? Uh, my next one is an NWA track of their second album that uh, nobody really gives a fuck about. Um, you've, you've picked a hidden gem on an album that presumably went platinum. Yes. Go for it, Car. Go for yes. <laughs> it did. It's actually the first. Uh, I'm only uh, saying that because someone else will. Yeah, the first hardcore uh, hip hop album to ever. Um, make it to number one the number one fucking regular charts in, in America and it's not very good it's I tell you what it's fucking interesting is what it is um, the song is called Real Something can't say the word don't die well, um, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll read it out What's you read it out there yeah the screen's in front of you I'm not saying that <laughs> exactly You're not allowed to say it uh, the album I can't say what the album's called either uh, Something you for can. Life now you can say it backwards Right. It is, but it's written backwards. It's written backwards. That's not what that was. It was Ethel for Zagan. Yeah, there Ethel said for Zagan. Right, is actually how is one of the ways it's known. Um, that's how they one of the how they got away with calling it that. 
they called the Eiffel for Zagan. If you want to write that down and uh, look at it backwards, you'll know what the name for this. Um, <laughs> Eiffel for Zagan. Yeah, Jesus Christ. That's a great know. name, even if you don't reverse it. We shouldn't yeah. reverse it. We can. <coughs> Do what you want. Yeah, so it's their final album. Um, this is uh, Ice Cube's gone at this stage, right? He left in between albums. Dr. Dre is essentially gone, but the album's coming out anyway. And he's taken uh, the DLC with him. So the two main songwriters uh, for NWA would have been Ice Cube and would have been the DLC. And Thanks, Jerry Heller. You fucked it up. Exactly, Although, yeah. Would they have come up with more great albums? They wouldn't, they wouldn't have, no. Would have been over fairly soon anyway. Um, so uh, Dre is gone. He's on this album, Dre. He's, I think he might be even the first guy rapping on this. Um, so Dre's doing a little bit more rapping on this than he did on the first one because they were down, down a guy. Um, oh. And DLC is fucking off. The Dead Row Records getting formed. All this kind of shit is happening kind of in the background. So the whole thing is fun to show you. This is the last album. Um, for some reason, I always had it in my head that NWA had a third album. There might be, there might be something I that always just, thought they did. Yeah, I really no, thought they had three albums. Yeah. I, I could, I could, there might be something out there that's like, you know, B-sides or something, or rough cuts or something. That, that's something in my head about a tour record. Um, anyway, but this is the second and final one. It's, it's fucking over. Um, Dre's gone. Uh, Q was gone. DLC was doing loads of the writing. is gone. And, like, you're left with kind of DJ Yella and, and fucking Easy E. Like, MC Ren. Arabian Prince is gone already. Um, so, yeah, you're looking. The, the, the ranks didn't swell. They turned to show you. Uh, so, this album done extraordinarily well, but it wasn't really received very well. This, instead of having the, the, the kind of straight out of Compton and fuck the police kind of stuff that the first one had and talking about, you know, the dope man and kind of social issues, this, because Cube wasn't there to kind of write about real stuff, they just relied on absolute garbage and it's mad misogynistic, it's mad sexist, it's mad fucking racist, it's extraordinarily... Hang like, on, how could... No, I'm not going to ask. Yeah, it is misogynistic. <laughs> it it just that. leans so hard into like two or three teams instead of being wide. It, it's fucking, it, it, it hurt its kind of, it hurt the band's legacy. You know what I mean? Okay. Now, what I'll say is that this song that I picked, that I can't even say the name, but uh, <laughs> Real Lads Don't Die, right? Um is fucking outrageously good. I fucking love it to bits. Now, the the single off this was called, I think it was uh, Always Into Something or something like that. Um, done okay, whatever. It's you real can't dark. say what it is. I'm not allowed to say what it is. What, the name of the song? Yeah. Yeah, Real Lads Don't Die is the name of the song. <laughs> and, I know, I um, the other ones. Yeah, we're not allowed to say any of them. Just, not allowed to say any of them, yeah. Um, just let's uh, get out of this before we get in trouble. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, I found out. I only found out there yesterday that the one of the main samples they use in this is a uh, "Rise Above" by Black Flag as well, which is real fucking weird. Really? But, um, yeah, I never would have thought that in a I'll million be years. Be listening now for that now. Yeah, um, yeah, it, you won't miss it. Um, I just thought it was just a random guitar, and then I, I kind of heard the bit in my head. I was like, I know that bit. Uh, I'm gonna play it. I'm gonna play it now. I'm just gonna jump kind of straight in and play it for a minute or two. But like, it's it's real dark. It's kind of moody. It's it's got a load going on. If the if the album wasn't as fucking abrasive, this might have this might have kept the legacy afloat. But instead, it's the fucking it's the little fucking redheaded stepson of the of the NWA family. You know, no one talks right. about it. No one. I don't even own it. You know what I mean? Which is yeah. weird. I'm, I'm gonna buy it now for this song, um, but I had to skip. Tw- <laughs> I had to skip twenty seconds. Um, of it because the start of it is just stupid but this is a uh, Real Lads Don't Die by NWA I'm a nigga with an I got a case for spitting in a motherfucker's face for me and my ace we got a taste of a motherfucker's billy club he took his gun and put it to my head and said nigga start running so tell me what's the next episode is he crazy does he wanna chase me or waste me I thought run nigga run but I caught myself because my secondary thought I get dead, hard, real, but still, motherfucker said I want another black motherfucker dead. Niggas ain't good for shit to me. Cause it's a race with second class. So get your ass up against the wall, bitch. And then he tried to jump me, but the fuck became the victim of a walk by. Fucking was right, you get a foot up in your asshole. It's just another way to let you know. 
like that's great. Like it is good. That is just fucking really, really good stuff. Like, and then the, I just want to celebrate sample. Yeah, like fucking. Uh, it's, I did know that song because I did used to listen to this album a lot as a kid. Yeah, um, I thought it was hard, man. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, like I listened to it years and years ago, but nothing ever stuck to me because it just it didn't have fucking straight out of Compton. I fucked the police and a dope man or express yourself or whatever you know. Um, just never never stuck with me. Not not my bag. Like I said, don't don't own it. it wasn't my bag as a kid. Now I'm gonna have to go. Out. I think it's been repressed to death, so you could probably buy it for 16 euro now. So I'm going to try and pick that up in the next few weeks. Um, once uh, AOB leave me alone, patreon.com forward slash last that podcast. Um, listen, I love that song to be, it's like I said, it's real dark, it's moody, it's grim, it's got the real kind of, kind of, not necessarily gangster rap thing because a lot of the gangster rap stuff had like yeah. flute, uh, flute samples and fucking, I had all that, <laughs> like this is straight in fucking, Graham Dark has the electric yeah. guitar, which is a black flag sample that I only found out yesterday. I had to go rooting for samples to see if there was anything cool, and I found out it was Royce Above by Black Flag, which is uh, another big, uh, another big fucking uh, big song of mine. So yeah, Dre and uh, Yella produced all the music for it, and uh, I assume DLC would have done most of the lyrics. What's that sample? That bang, 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 bang. I know the guitar that one. That that's the black flag. No, one. no, the like. The bells, or maybe you just added. Oh, the I'd say they just added the bell, just fucking yeah. tuned it to, to, to match the. Like, if I, if I jump back here, you fucking where we should hear. Just a bell, like, yeah, that's a tech one. It's very unfazed. Yeah, it's, it's in, I don't know about in your headphones on, on the sharing audio, I might be sharing a uh, mono, but in mine, it's bouncing left to right with a reverb uh-huh. on it. So it, I'd say it's just a sample. Um, uh, anyway, that was NWA with real lads and ladies and lassies and, and people don't die. That's the name of that song. Uh, you'll see the name of the song when we release the uh, the, um, the 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 playlist. And just right. keep keep it to yourself. This horrible folks. Who's our next one? Well, I have to jump back in with this beach scenario okay. pack again for a All second. Right. Remember, so I said well, back Kilkenny. To I was like, Kilkenny is, is landlocked, right? Kilkenny's not landlocked. Uh, Kilkenny. I thought it was. Uh, I if know. you look closely between Wexford and, and Waterford, there's a little fucking thing, and it has two beaches. <laughs> so in my head, I was like, Kilkenny doesn't got beaches, but Killarney will have like 10. Killarney apparently has none, and Kilkenny has two. So for all the people listening in Kerry and Killarney, fucking have a beach war. I changed, when he has changed our names, his answer so similar. How about that? Then it's, then it's Killarney. That's oh. definitely a beach, right? I haven't, you know, people be talking about like Colony Hill and I should bring our dogs out to Colony Hill. And I don't even know what it is. Like if you, if you, I, I, sometimes I'd be like, I'd be, I'd be like, it's a, Colony Strand. Yeah, that's up by fucking. I can tell you. It's up by Lock, somewhere. Lachlan's Town. Is it there? I don't know. Don't, don't know where Lachlan's Town is either. Couldn't tell you. Honestly. Don't, Brack. don't know where that is. <laughs> I don't, I don't know where any of these places are. Cause pe- people, they'd be saying that to me. I say, oh, yeah, I'm out from, you know, you know, Balbriggan. I go like, I know, I've seen it on a map once. Well, well, tell you what this, it's the, it's the Balbriggan on the opposite end. Like down, like. Yeah, down, like, like past Docky like and. Bray. Before Bray, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. And I'm saying that with the knowledge I've just learned from the <laughs> internet. <laughs> I knew Kalini was down that way, but I, did, I didn't know how, it's actually, it's actually four in Bray, but I thought it was no, north. No. no. Yeah, all right. There you go. I, I'm just shy at geography. I know how to get to like six places and that's it. Like, Yeah, that's, that's all I've ever yeah, yeah, until I know how to get. Anyway, you were asking me when next Where is it in relation to where my ma lives? <laughs> like, that's, yeah. that's you know, where I grew up. Like, that, I'd be Whenever right someone there. goes to me, have you never been there? Why not? And no. I'll go, because I had no cause to go there. Yeah, why would I go there? Is there an Iceland there? Do they do well, them fucking. Like, I, can't, I, can't, I didn't wake up one day and go, <gasps> Kalini, I've never been to Kalini. I kind of did because I read this thing online about it being the best place ever to bring your dogs. So I was like, Kalini, I'm going to go to fucking Kalini. And then I looked at it. I kind of, I looked at it. I put it into Google Maps and it was like an hour and a bit away. I'm like, stick that up your hole. I'm going to Fairview. <laughs> so Kalini Beach, yes. Kilkenny Beach, yes. Kil- Killarney, apparently not. Okay. It's too rocky. I think it's too high. All right. <laughs> <laughs> or a geography there and thing. anyway you asked me you asked me for um, yeah who was your next, next one hidden yeah. gem was yeah. my next hidden gem is his little beats of <laughs> <laughs> kill the man <laughs> no it's Emma and it's the song now you'll have to help me out with this because you like Lovecraft stuff yeah Cthulhu 
Cthulhu, yeah. That's how you pronounce it, correct? Cthulhu, yeah. yeah. Um, from the album, from the album, "The Future's Void" from 2014. This this album was actually quite big at the time. All right. but this isn't a single, and as well as that, ultimately, every time I ask anyone, "Have you ever listened to Emma like Emma Hill Bunton?" or no, like it's E M A. It's just the initials E M A. It stands for Erica M Anderson. So yeah, who is an American singer, songwriter, and producer. Um, I like this song because it has one of those big amazing fucking industrially 80s style crescendos that mm. you hear in a Nine Inch Nails song. Like you're really, it's just, it's so fucking deadly. Yeah. And it's, I don't know if it's the best song on the album, but it is my favorite one because you're waiting around for that crescendo. The problem is when you know that crescendo is in that song mm. and the rest of the song is only grand, but when it does hit, you're like, ah! Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what we, what we'll be doing was we cut the star charts so people get a lump of the crescendo earlier. So you can okay. thank me for that. Let me for that. Um, <clears throat> stick it on there and then see what you think now. All right. We'll let uh, play that. Uh, it has the crescendo a bit earlier. Cause if you can't find any redemption, uh, you know you're there often dying. Adele remix by Trent Reznor or something that's cool mad isn't it yeah it's yeah. sort of like I reckon fans of Chelsea Wolf and maybe even Garbage might be into to this album um, this album I remember when it first came out just hearing about it through reviews and stuff like yeah. that but it, it I don't know if her career ever took off as massively as getting all those savage reviews and Pitchfork and others but it's a great standout album and it sort of is about like the cynical look at technology and the internet mm. specifically Um I found this record, I was, just couldn't believe I found this record for a fiver. The lovely Hell blue yeah. transparent one in Head. Do you remember how good that mm-hmm. shop was? Head. They had loads of mad shit for cheap, yeah. Places that opened up in, I think they had one in... The Oilac. Uh, the Oilac, they had one in the one out in Liffey Valley. Uh, yeah, they might the have cow- some down the, down the country as well. Closed and overnight, the, yeah. Yeah, I had like wholesale records, like, I remember we got the Paradise Lost album there, Plague Within, for like 15 quid. Yeah. It's a double etched vinyl and all. Like, hmm. I got some stuff there. Stuff like I think that. I bought a copy of uh, Doggy Style, with Snoop Dogg Doggy Style, for like 20 quid there when it was like retailing. It was that like digitally remastered double LP, maybe even a triple LP, and it was that was like 50 quid in Tower Records. Hmm. And I got it for like 20 odd there. Like, it was, I got, I got some fucking great stuff there. I have to say, like, and it was, it was the way they had stuff laid out wasn't great either. So I was to do a bit of digging. I always like having to do a bit. Of that digging. was good. That yeah. was good the way it was. And they hadn't a clue what way they were putting stuff yeah. up. Just they a mess. out there. Like I, I got that Cambodian uh, surf rock album. Oh, that I was, like, actually looking for. I was looking online for that, and it was like thirty quid. I would before even delivery, and then they found it in there for thirteen. Savage. Quid. And I was like, what a chance to me finding that one mad rare record yeah, like, out of nowhere. That's but. Uh, yeah, she followed she followed this album up with the soundtrack. She did a soundtrack for the movie Hashtag Horror. I have not seen that. I'm not gonna lie to you. Not going to either. And 
No, and then uh, I don't know, it might be good. I don't know. And, and then it's 2017 album, Exile mm. in the Outer Ring, which follows the kind of same theme as the Future's Void a little bit. But uh, mm. it is kind of 90s ish music mixed with industrial. But, uh, yeah, definitely. That's Emma, EMA with Cthulhu. Enjoyed it. If you're, if you're that way inclined to have a gander at that Future's Void album, mm. I reckon you'd like it. Who's your next hidden gem? My last one, uh, last one. My, my last one is an, uh, another rap song. It's Old Dirty Bastard of a second album, uh, which I can't really say what it's called um, it's... either. They love this. Um, you're fucking, I, know, I can't even say the name, but I'm going to call it Lads Place, right? Uh, the album's called Lads Place. The album's called Rolling With You. And this... Well, it's uh, going out to Colony Beach in the car with your... It is, <laughs> with, with, with the lads. <laughs> um, no, you wouldn't write a song about the lads. Lads, I wrote you a song. I'm going to stick it on the car on the way to Clinton Beach. Rolling with you. Are you, are you. Did you write a song about like going out in a car with us? Yeah, because I like it. It's my favorite thing to do. <laughs> Fuck out of here. Get out of this car. Rolling right now. with you. Rolling with my boys. Um, so this song is a. Uh, this album is mad fragmented and mad fucked up. Now, this, this album is where the, the, the single Got Your Money. Um, which is obviously a stone called fucking killer of a song. Um, it's so good. Give and, me uh, money. Yeah. Um, that, that song's on this album and the rest of the album sounds nothing like that. Like nothing like that. There's like a, a fucking, there must be 10 different producers. It sounds like it was just painful to make. Well, everyone in, I find everyone in Wu-Tang would release the album they wanted to, but there would be one big dirty radio banger. Yeah, on. yeah, pretty much. Yeah. At least. Yeah, usually that, that, that was kind of the way it went. And then as, as the years went on, they were like, fuck, I'm just making albums that I want to make. Because um, people kind of, when the back, I don't know, Wu-Tang's fucking weird. But, um, that's, that's the name of their, uh, that should be the name of their documentary when, they're funny, when the bangers are over. Exactly, when the bangers are over. The curtain call on bangers. And um, so th- this song, like, it's mad glued together. Like you can tell that this was just a hack job of fucking <laughs> like they just put ODB in there, threw gargle at him and whatever he wanted and just, just, just be ODB and be grand. We'll figure it out. You know what I mean? And most of the albums kind of like that. Like there's a Rick James cover on it. Um, of course there is. And it's fucking mad. It's him singing. He's not even rapping. He's singing a Rick James cover. It's fucking play that. mad. Play that. Play that now. <laughs> Please, I'm not even joking. Do you want yeah. me to play it? Yeah, yeah, it should be there ready, right? It will, to, he's it will singing, he's singing he sings a Rick, Rick James. I think it's yeah, like, Who, who Are think, You? or something. I mean, like that. we can't just say we're playing these songs, we can't just say that and then leave it to people's imagination. Yeah, I, mean, I need to, I need to feel this realized in front of me. Um, oh, fucking hell, find a bad it puts on the spot there. Sorry, you did not tell it. It's just I'm on the desktop version of Spotify and it's it's very here. We go. Ooh, it's it's yeah. very, very different. Um, yeah, it's uh, cold blooded, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's cold blooded. But cold I'll, blooded. I'll play a bit of it now. <laughs> Here, just yeah. listen to this. This is mad. Y'all know nothing about the pimp game. I want to thank Rick James for letting me do this song. Thank you very much. How you walking, girl? I watch, I watch, I watch the way. Yeah. Who are you? <laughs> Music sounds like that Justin Timberlake fucking sexy back as well. I'm bringing sexy back. I'm bringing sexy back. Which is I'm bringing sexy back. <laughs> like, the words will I describe? Mm-hmm. There's no dictionary. Book. This is mental. It's great. Till explain how you look. Cause I think you're hot. Saying sexy, back. This is obviously where, uh, well, I won't say where Justin Timberlake got it because just Justin Timberlake got that those songs from. Oh, not sexy, but no, Timberland. No, yes, from Timberland. Yeah, sorry, yeah. yeah. So I, I, I don't know who I don't know who produced this. Pharrell, Pharrell, no, he got the first, the f- yeah. justified, wasn't it? That um, album was supposed to be for Michael Jackson. Oh, really? Was it? Yeah, that's oh, why it's so like. 
Um, so I have to line up my normal song now. It'll take a second. Um, Sorry about that. You're already I, I had to hear that, and it was it's, well worth it. It's absolutely worth it. It's fucking batshit, man. Oh, um, no, it belongs to. It's fucking great. I listen to that album all the time because it's fucking mad. The whole album is fucking mad. Oh, on um, <coughs> it's so fragmented. But this is one of my favorite songs on this album. There's another song that I'm obsessed with, but I played it too many times on the radio show. Um, and I didn't want to do it again called I Can't Wait and it's fucking it's one of the best things I ever heard in my life and it's it hurts listening to it I remember playing it for you the first time and you were, you you said like the anxiety I feel right now because you can you can hear him losing his shit and the music is just yeah it's just it sounded like it sounded like he was being taken advantage of by yes, some people exactly. but I don't know so I picked I Rolling know. with You and I skipped once again I skipped the first almost minute of it before the song even starts He's just because talking, is he? It's him losing his fucking marbles. <laughs> and uh, he says loads of stuff I just don't want. You'll have to find it yourselves, people. But I'm going to yeah. play, play this for you. Now. It's called, the song's yes. called Ro- Rolling With You. And uh, I might have played this on a radio show before. Because the, the chorus, I listen now for the chorus. The chorus sounds like they found some fucking like, meth head in an alley to sing the chorus, right? And it's fucking incredible. But you can hear how it's all stitched together and he's like overlapping on himself when he's not meant to be and all. But because of that, it makes the song even better. Uh, this is uh, Rolling With You by ODB. I shut the fucking whole world down. You white motherfuckers can never, I can't ever take over. You can't ever take over. You shut the fuck up and you shut the fuck up. That's what Yo. the fuck you do. Uh, can I get a beer? You ain't using your phone, you ain't calling the cops Cause nigga, I'm the only king of the block I'm the only black god Motherfucker. And I came to rock the spot Why when I throw a football pass at a bitch she missed I Ain't trying to be funny, gonna use my fist You can't use the family feud You can't run it on a cuckoo The brain's saying, but keep on dirty safe Not locked up Cause I have your fucking ass locked up I stash you, licking you down like that blunt You ain't getting what you want I do what I want If I got a problem, a problem got a problem until it's gone I'm the only unique ace on You reap what you sow, fucking with the O I got the precepts You ain't down. using the popo, fuck you so so I got the key to your hoe, I stop your whole flow All you bitches roll with me from the ghetto You want me to control this fucking show Give old dirty what he want and more so yeah <laughs> that's the, beautiful the, the some album. of the lyrics in that were incredible if I've got a problem, then my problem's got, got, got a problem. problem. That's a good lyric. Yeah. And I've got the deeds to your hoe. I'm pretty pretty sure. That's, uh, that's like, I've got the deeds to your house, but he just went, I've got the deeds to your hoe. To your hoe. And yeah, and yeah um, that chorus did sound well, like, well, maybe maybe someone that was just hanging around. N- no studio experience. Needed. Oh yeah, 100%. Can you sing? No, get in there. Jesus, I'm rolling, I'm rolling with you. you. Jesus, it might, it might have been I'm like he, he pulled up to a McDonald's window and the girl was like, "What can I do for you?" And he's like, "Could you sing and sing these lyrics into this?" Yeah, it's his like, phone right now. With her, with her mic, actually, with her, with her <laughs> McDonald's mic, because it does sound a little bit like she was just put on the spot. Yeah, exactly. Read this, read this faster. Put a gun to her. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, it, I love that song. I love that album. Um, I almost love that album more than Return to 36 Chambers because it's fucking batshit mad and a big fan yeah. of that manic energy that ODB has. That track is actually, that track was produced by a guy called Mr. Fingers. He was like a house music legend. Right. Um, he did fucking produced, I read a lot of the stuff he's famous for. He's like one of these like original kind of dance music, house music guys. He was a fucking legend. And a guy and called that, or- that has, has a bit of orchestration as well, which yeah. you know we both love. Exactly. Uh, the other producer guy called Irv Gotti, he was a producer for like a Shanti, Ja Rule, Jennifer Lopez, Jay Z, DMX, Kanye West. Like he, so there was people involved in this album um, that were like huge. Like I said, Neptunes were involved in it, and Pharrell and his own. Like there's so much stuff. Mm. Um, the album is a mad like melting pot of great producers. we like the maddest bastard to ever be involved in hip hop, and you can hear when you listen to that song. 
like how it's cut together and there's bits of him <laughs> yeah. like from other songs that they just moved in, 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 in fucking <laughs> like Logic Pro or whatever or Pro Tools just to fit in, in the, there's one bit yeah. like in the first like 10 seconds or the first like because he does the little intro I was giving it about we people and then he starts rapping and there's a bit where he just stops and there's obviously just a bit from another song to just throw in there because there's too much of a gap and all there's so much of that going on that's fun. I, I love it anyway that's ODB we're rolling with you from 1999 who is your last one? my last one is a band that's probably the biggest band that I picked and it's The Sword mm. and if you haven't heard of The Sword that's a good thing it means I've done my job sort yes. of in, in a way uh, The Sword would be well known The Sword are massively well known with rockers that I know but in the stoner rock circles yeah. they're very well known to be mm. fair but I have picked a song off one of their lesser appreciated albums and I picked a non-single as well so this is kind of buried mm. in, a, in, a, in a in a pile already and the song is called Lawless Lands from the album uh, Warp Riders from 2010 yeah, 2010? yeah. Mm. Um, this kind of has riffs and harmonies leaning on, on Tin Lizzy they are from um they're from Texas. What part of Texas hmm. are from? And um they kind of do stoner rock and just straightforward metal sometimes as well. Yeah. And they did a lot of doom in their early years. But this is when this is a concept album sort of around science fiction. It's the first time that they went a little bit more broader rock and, and took themselves a little tiny bit less seriously. Yeah. Well, so uh last year on there, I, I absolutely love the song. You'll hear the Thin Lizzy influences as well. Okay, make sure I got my time. I got my time and right, and here we go. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> as well like that. I love it it's a banger it's not yeah. exactly like a lot, a lot of other stuff will be a little bit more well they, they keep changing around a lot to be fairness to the side yeah. they don't stick with the start of doom moved on to stoner metal mm. moved on to this which is more straightforward rock but still like bangers and mm. now the days they're doing much more 
the last album used futures was had loads more synths and it had much more of a prog hmm. feel so it makes sense to go in that direction but because you can hear how talented they are musically they can do whatever they want yeah really much uh, that was produced by Matt Bales and he does stuff for he did stuff for Mastodon Pearl Jam Isis and Ken Mount and I think he did some mixing for Soundgarden as well hmm. um, yeah he knows his rock they are the sword Lawless Lands good at rock yeah, that was our little selection of 12 hidden gems that you may or may not have known. You didn't because we're so in the know. So in the know. Yeah, unless you're into them bands, in which case, sticking around us. Yeah, the only thing we got wrong in that whole podcast, I think we can all agree, was the beaches. Pretty much. Pretty much. So, just to recap, Kalini, yes. Killarney, no. Speaking Kilkenny, of... Speaking strangely of, uh, enough, yes. <laughs> Speaking of beaches, I watched this fucking show the other day called Away, and it's like Hillary, Hillary uh, Swank. For some reason, I couldn't say her name. Hillary. Hillary Swank is like an astronaut going to Mars or something like that. And they use this, they use this sound effect in it, and it's like... Bloom, 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 bloom. And I was like, what the fuck is that? I know what that is. And it was bothering me for like four, four or five episodes until I twigged it. And it's like the intro the fucking that bleeding all saints song about the beach what's that beaches. i'm moving i'm coming on here and yeah you know the intro i to think it? it's called the beach i no, i think it's off the movie the beach i don't think it's called beaches i'm gonna find out shores right? pure shores or pure something Pure shores that's it it's a pure shores yeah something like that yeah 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 it is yeah. i'm gonna click on them and it's gonna tell me come on internet pure shores but it's the intro to full right. computer to pure shores was the one of the sound effects that they can used. You hear, can you yeah, it's a great it song. It is good. It's a great song. I'm going, well to, I'm going to play that uh, on Saturday. That's what I got oh, to yeah. do. Yeah, take um, me to the beach. Uh, but the, yeah, the intro to that pure so- shore song is like a sound effect that they use in this TV show to like show when there's drama about to happen or something like that. Oh right, and yeah. it was bothering the fuck out because every that's, time it I think that's that's will that's a William Orbit thing. He had loads of those samples yeah. going on with Madonna and all. Yeah, he's great. And I just every so, time yeah. like someone was about to have a round that t- telly show, I'm like, take me to the beach. So fucking out, giving that loads. <laughs> They're killing each other and dying in space and all. Oh, I like to elements. hear people dying in space. Hate yeah. space. Stupid. You do hate fucking space. You won't. Just all science for you is stupid. <laughs> Most of the time it is pure nonsense. It gives people. It gives people. Do you know what? At least medieval stuff, they take the acting seriously. When people say sci-fi, they license to do whatever the fuck you want and look stupid. There, I said. You, you've said it. You've fucking said it. So it's the, yeah. the month of Halloween. We're not allowed to talk about science fiction. I'm only talking about <laughs> Halloween. Um, yeah, that's us for uh, this week. We're back again next week with another podcast. Back on Saturday with um, a live show. All the links are on the Facebooks. Facebook.com forward slash Lost Art Podcast. If you like what we do and you want to be become a subscriber and get access to a lot of bits and bobs that we've thrown up on our Patreon, it's Patreon.com forward slash Lost Art Podcast, and it's five euros or five dollars a month. And uh, you can stay there for as long as you like. You don't have to subscribe for a year. Um, and if you want to tell us which has the most pure shores, Colony Beach or <laughs> Killarney Beach, which has the most pure beaches. I didn't realize we, had, we just went back to the beaches there. Oh, Jesus Christ. Almighty. Anyway, folks, that's it for this week. We are back. Um, when the fuck are we back? We are, we're back in um, next Saturday at some stage. We're back. No, we're not back. Yes, we are back this Saturday and then Monday for a new podcast. I lost me more yep. there. Yeah. I full on lost me marriage. I think anyway, I think but then people hear this we'll be doing a TV show on Saturday coming. Uh, yeah, coming. Yes, exactly. We've got TV coming up. We took a break sure. for a few weeks to figure some shit out, but we're back. Um back with a vengeance. Anyway, see you next week folks. Good night. Done. Grant. It wasn't bad. Let's see how do I stop? Kept this? the energy up. Uh I see there's a new that new rock radio.